Hello, hello, Jay now here, and I, we have a lot to talk about. I want to apologize for the fan right now because I don't normally film in the daytime. Uh, I have no air conditioning in my apartment. It's super hot and I had to close all the windows and all of that so we can get some decent sound, turn all the lights. So the fan's going to stay on, but I apologize for the noise. <laughs> Real quick, let's go ahead and get into this. First up, um, my UFC Fight Night Vegas 33 picks. It's happening this Saturday. Another good card, I think it's going to be. It's happening at 6 p.m. Pacific time, so here in Cali, 6 p.m. Uh, get home earlier. Now, opening up the card, the main card, I'm choosing Brian Barbarina to beat Jason Witt. I am choosing Zaruk Adeshev to beat Ryan Benoit. I am choosing Cheyenne Vise to beat Paula, Paula DePaula, Gloria DePaula. <laughs> I'm choosing Kyung Ho uh, Kang to beat Ronnie Yaya. Now, onto the main event. Let's go ahead and break this down a bit. So we're seeing, I believe, the number eight ranked Dariah Hall taking on Sean Strickland, who I think is ranked number 11 from 12. Both on little mini winning streaks. Both looking to try to crack into that top five, essentially. Trying to make a run, finally. Uh, Sean is 30. Uriah is 36. And this is a division where age does matter. Um, it's not the heavyweight division. Time will catch up to you faster here. Uh, we have Sean Strickland, who's an all-around fighter, I believe a brown belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. He does have submission victories. He's extremely durable. He's faster than he looks. He's pretty diverse. Um, um, he's got good defense. Uh, you have Uriah Hall, who's like two to three inches longer with the hands and the feet, and he does fight long. He is a second-degree black belt in karate. Um, he's got a ground game as well. He has submission victories as well, but he's got, got good takedown defense. He's probably going to want to keep this standing. However, I'm not sure who's going to be physically stronger in this fight. I do believe we're probably going to see a stand-up war, but I'm not sure because if Strong gets in trouble, I believe he's probably going to try to take this down and probably try to muscle him, uh, put Uriah in a place where he's uncomfortable. But Uriah has shown that he has some good ground and pound. I'm going back and forth on this one. I actually don't know who's going to win this fight. I think Uriah is going to be a bit more powerful, um, but Uriah, you have to have to manage your cardio. This is five rounds. He has been times where his cardio has been a little bit suspect. I think Sean's got better cardio. Uriah, you can't start slow. Sean is someone who does start fast, uh, does take the center of the octagon. Uriah, you're going to have to avoid fighting off your back foot, avoid backpedaling, take the center of the octagon, initiate, be first. Um, Sean's good at all of those things. Uh, higher uh, manager cardio. So you're going to want to be accurate. So I'm not going to say necessarily raise your offensive output, uh, Uriah, but um, defense, angles, feints, mix it up. Both of you tear apart each other's lead leg. Um, I think, again, I think Sean's more likely to try to go for the takedown. However, again, Uriah has been working on that. So I actually... I don't know how this is going to play out. We could see a little bit of everything here. I think this is going to be a good fight, though. Honestly, I really do. I'm going back and forth here. Um, I guess maybe because I remember I've followed Uriah the whole time. So it's probably my biasness coming through here. Him having the more kind of like spectacular finishes. So I'm going to pick Uriah. Him being 36 years old. Again, age does matter in this division. This might be his last little good little run here. Sean's 30 years old. He has a little bit more time. Uh, let me look at the way and things of that nature. I might change my mind, but for right now, I'm going to go ahead and pick Uriah Hall. So, real quick, I want to talk about the heavyweight division here in the UFC. Stipe, of course, Stipe Miocic, former champ, had a um, two-time champ, had a podcast with Lil Paul from the Paul Brothers. As you know, I, I can't differentiate from them when I say their first names. I'm sorry. I know what they look like, but when I talk about them, when I refer to them more than once, I always get confused. It's just easier for me to say Lil Paul. So he was on there with Lil Paul and they were talking about how, you know, Dana White doesn't like either of them. Um, one championship said, uh, put out a tweet or whatever to their fans saying, who should we sign next? And um, uh, Stipe, uh, I believe he reposted that tweet saying, basically putting feelers out there, should he go somewhere else? Saying that he deserves a title shot before or should be in this. In no, no, I think he said he wants the title shot. I don't think he's actually said he wants to be in this interim title shot that's actually happening between Derek Lewis and Cyril Gain. Now, we know that the interim title winner will get that automatic title shot next. So, Stevie, I'm not sure if he's trying to bypass that and just get the title shot, which I think he is. So, I, I mean, does he have a point? Does, should he just straight up get the next title shot? First off, I don't think there should be an interim belt in the first place. It's only been like three months since Francis won the belt. And according to his team, he just wanted to wait um, for, to September instead of August. And even if he wanted to wait till November, again, I don't think that's long enough to have an interim belt. But of course, Dana White is saying other things that he wants more money. I do know he wants to fight John Jones and does want more money. So I think there's a lot going on there that we probably don't know. I don't think we can fully believe either side we know Dana White does like to pressure people into fighting more often and for lesser money and we also know that sometimes fighters sign bad contracts in the beginning for like 
seven fights, 11 fights, and not realizing that they could peak earlier than that and deserve money earlier than that. So there's a lot going on there. So the truth is probably somewhere in between. Um, but I don't think that there should be an interim belt. I don't think it's long enough for that. So I actually think that this fight is silly. Now, as far as Stipe, if you don't want to be in the interim title fight, then I, do you deserve an automatic rematch? Yeah, the rubber match, you did beat him first. He had to wait like almost four years to get back to you. But yes, you did beat him first. Um, he beat you more decisively than you beat him. But again, you, with your um, being the most decorated heavyweight, having the most title defenses, all of that put together, yes, you should be getting another um, title shot. You bring up the fact that DC got like three fights in a row. Stipe, this is where my frustration with you comes in and it has always come in. You act like you, you, it feels like you don't really like your job, right? And it also feels like it's sports entertainment. MMA is new to Main Street. Therefore, the fighters sometimes have, sometimes have to do more. You're not getting paid what you necessarily should be paid. It's the fighters who manage to get the outside contracts. It's the fighters who manage to get fans to want to see them fight, whether we love them or hate them, right? Like Kobe Covington, who's getting a, who just sat out and got another title shot. But why? He makes himself visible. He's talking all the time. He's all over the place. He stays in our face and make, he has a solid fan base who's always lobbying in for him to fight. We could be talking about a completely different weight class and you see the comments, what about Kobe Covington? I mean, <laughs> he's done the work. You refuse to do the work. It's like you see the formula, you know, hey, champions have not been getting automatic title shots since Conor McGregor entered the fray. And, and that's just what it is. You cannot live in the uh, world in your head. You have to live in reality. In reality, you got to do a little bit more than just win fights. And you're not even doing that. You're not fighting. You want to sit out. So, Stipe, <laughs> you're a great fighter. You've accomplished great things. But at this point in the world of MMA, especially in the world of the UFC, because of who you are, look, you could have been sitting back and chirping like Kobe Covington and built up the fan base and been putting out videos and been all over social media and doing the work that way. You probably could have just talked your way into a rematch. You have the paperwork to back it up. But it's like you sit there and you're like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to talk. You should just give it to me. You're doing the podcast now, but you should have been doing this. You could have been talking is what I'm saying. From the moment you lost to Francis, you could have been talking about. Uh, Joanna Yejinchek. Why you? She got like three title shots in a row. Why you think that is? As soon as she lost that belt, she's like, I'm still the best. I got the records. I got this. I did this. I did that. I'm still the best. I still deserve it. I'm the most entertaining. I got Poland behind me. Da, 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 da. But you don't want to do that. You're like, ugh. It's like, you're too good. <laughs> and now you wait at the last minute. When in a couple of weeks, we're about to have an interim uh, title fight between Derek, who has a fan base, who does that extra work, and he fights. He's he's hitting it on both sides, okay? Cyril Gain, who also fights, who has a machine behind him. Cyril's got a machine behind him. So he doesn't have to chirp as much. He's got backing. So you don't want to get in that fight. You don't want to fight. You don't want to chirp, chirp, chirp. <sighs> I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. You have to do a little bit more. You do deserve an automatic uh, rematch. But unfortunately, in the state of the UFC right now as it is, you can't just sit back and get it without fighting, without working the uh, media, without working the fans. Get us behind you. You've got some a fan base. Work them up. Roll them up. You should have been had little Paul on the podcast. You know, he can't wait to get in Dana White's face. Come on. So, okay, let me know what you think about that whole situation. Um, what should Stipe do? What you should not do? you agree with him? Should he just be able to just get it without doing anything else? What do you think about the interim belt? Should we have an interim belt? Why and why not? Uh, Francis' situation with the UFC. John Jones being thrown in there. Just tell me what you think of the state of the heavyweight division. Oh, that's the other thing. The heavyweight division is more um, talent rich than it's ever been, Stipe. You have a lot of heavyweights now who've got personality, who've got backing, who talk, who have, you know what I mean? It's not shallow anymore. So there's more competition outside of just fighting. So let me know what you think about the state of the heavyweight division. And uh, finally, 
I want to talk about Simone Biles. Um, so the Olympics are going on right now. I love the Olympics. I've, I've watched the Olympics since I was a kid. My family watches the Olympics. Um, it's probably the only time I'm like a, a USA type of person. Um, but really, I just love sports. I love athletes. I'm the type of person who watches all kinds of weird stuff. I just saw something the other day, though. I was like, is that? When did this get added to the <laughs> Olympics? All right. But especially gymnastics. Uh, you know, Dominique Dawes. A uh, little short haired white girl who did that second beam after she had already busted her ankle up and landed on one foot that had to be carried off and we got the gold. Like some of the best moments have actually come from women's gymnastics. So um, Simone Biles. Simone Biles is pretty much the consensus greatest gymnast ever. <laughs> and I didn't say greatest female gymnast. Greatest gymnast ever. Okay. I'm not going to run down her accolades. Look them up for yourself. Um, Simone Biles has just recently, yesterday, pulled out of the team competition, like right before the competition. She's also now also pulled out of the all around competition and that's the big one. That's the one low key that's even more important than the team one is the all around one she pulled out of that. We don't know as of right now if she's gonna be pulling out as, out of the individuals as well, but she's the best, she's the greatest. She pulled out, she pulled out citing uh, uh, mental health issues. She, she just cited out, she had to protect her mental health. Um, the world is coming down to her, especially, of course, uh, uh, here in America. And we've got people, of course, who are backing her, other athletes, of course, who are backing her as well, coming out to defend her. She did come stay there, um, and she put on, we saw the moment live where she said, I can't do it. She went off. She said she got lost in the air doing qualifiers, lost literally in the air, uh, lost herself. Um, she put on her sweats and sat there on the sidelines and coached the girls and was there. A lot of the ladies were thrown in there. Some ladies who, um, weren't going to have an opportunity to actually perform got a chance to perform and they delivered the ladies delivered they won the silver medal which is let me tell you right now gymnastics is subjective it's not like track where you have a line a timer and photo frame by frame where they can actually slow it down and see whose chest crossed that line first you don't have that gymnastics is subject subjective and because of that having the greatest gymnast in the world pull out means there was no way they were getting that gold no way they're not getting the gold unfair as fair as it may be they could not have gotten the gold i want to make that clear you're not giving that gold to a team where the greatest gymnast ever is not on it and we expected her to be on it also those other girls were for or ladies were first time uh olympians as well so um they they weren't gonna get the gold they weren't gonna get the gold the best they could have done was silver and that's what they did so for them they got their gold because they weren't gonna get the gold i just want to make that clear um, so instead of poor these, the stress that they would under, this really needs to be about how these ladies rose to the occasion as first time Olympians, especially the ones who weren't even supposed to be performing, who came in and delivered. They handled that stress, sudden stress, and they delivered. And that's amazing. They did an amazing job. That's amazing. For those saying, well, what about the extra mental stress? They're Olympians. They're there for a reason. This was a chance for them to prove that they are tough cookies and they proved it. They handled the stress and they got the, they did, they got it, they got the silver. They proved why they're Olympians. They, they did amazing. Now, Simone. Simone is a survivor of Larry Nassar, the sexual assaulter who uh, assaulted many young gymnasts and who was in jail for that. It's been proven, he's been proven guilty, there's no dispute, she's a survivor of that and still went on to become the greatest freaking gymnast ever. <laughs> and still did that. With the world on her shoulders, with us constantly picking apart everything that she does, with uh, unfair judging practices, grading her on a curve because she's just too good. They wanna make it competitive. So we're gonna take her down a notch because she's just too good. All that, and she gets lost in the air. If she would have gone on to perform, she could have died. That's not exaggeration. She could have fell on her head, she could have died. Serious injury. Now you think her pulling out added mental stress to those ladies. What do you think her getting hurt in the competition would have done to those ladies? Now, yes, it would have been better if she could have pulled out earlier, the earlier the better, obviously, so they can get mentally prepared, but that's when it happened. And her going out there and getting hurt would have been the worst thing for the team. The only way they were going to get the gold is if the Russians would have messed up royally. And they don't really mess up like that. So we should be celebrating those ladies 
and we need to get off of Simone Biles' back. Period. Point blank. Now we're seeing a slew of these. I did right. I want to make sure I covered all of those things um, that I said about her. <laughs> um, uh, betcha wish she would have smoked some trees instead, huh? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and speaking of trees, speaking of trees, real quick, Shikari Richardson, since we're talking about the Olympics, just my little two cents on Shikari Richardson. Stand up, uh, uh, um, she's a stand up gal for taking uh, responsibility for all that, for telling the truth and all of that good stuff, even though she knowingly broke the rules. That is what it is. It is the rules. You do have to follow those rules. I'm not going to dispute that. What I'm going to say is, Shikari, you, sh you should have lied. You should have lied, girl. You should have lied. Okay, so unfortunately, the she had the death in the family. She was mourning the death in the family, and she smoked some trees. She should have lied. She should have said, I was so wrapped up in my grief. It was The smoke was in the car. I didn't get out quick enough. I don't know if it tests differently, if it's edibles or if it's um, if you smoke it. So if, if it does test the same, she could have said, I had some cake or something that's not known for like brownies, you know what I mean? I had some cake or something, and the family members didn't tell me it was in until after afterwards family members should have took the bullet it's legal in Oregon so it's not like you would have went to jail in fact you probably would have been praised for taking the bullet she should have lied she should have lied <laughs> I'm sorry uh the one lady who tested positive said that she blamed it on the tainted meat and the burrito I'm not saying she lied we all know that that can happen if you have tainted substances tainted meat and all that so I'm not saying she's lying but she should have lied she probably should have lied Look, I'm weighing the imbalances here. Look, she's a stand-up lady and all that. She gets the respect and all of that. She was slated to win the gold medal, fastest lady in the world. The endorsements and all the money that comes from that, she doesn't come from money. This is the type of thing that elevates your entire family. Olympic athletes, unlike professional athletes, do not get paid well. The only ones who get paid well are the ones who actually have the sponsorship. Shikari, of course, she's going to be okay. I'm sure she's going to be fine, but she should have lied. She should have lied. <laughs> Uh, and, you know, we had the Naomi Osaka situation also pulling out doing to uh, uh, mental health issues. If she's willing to pay the fines, pay the fines. And it's not just women who are doing this. Mar Marshawn Lynch, I'm only here for the two minutes because I'm obligated. I'm only here because I'm obligated or whatever he used to say. He actually cited saying he would have protected himself from the media. That's the same thing. That's the same thing. So I think we're going to have to recalibrate now that we're in a world where we're starting to recognize mental health in athletes and the strain that they're under. I've always said that, especially with NFL teams, you know, they have a higher rate of domestic uh, uh, abuse and all of that situation, that these teams need to have uh, psychologists, outside psychologists, things that come in and do regular evaluations, sports psychologists, you need outside and independent uh, psychologists. I've been said we need to deal with this. So this is where we are. This is where we are. Simone, leave her alone. Ladies, job well done. Shakara, you should lie. <laughs> okay, um, let me know about all of this, everything we talked about. Let me know your picks for UFC Fight Night Vegas 33. Let me know what you think about the UFC heavyweight division in the state and Stipe Miocic and everything that was said. Let me know what you think about this Olympic drama with Simone Biles and Shakari and Olympic athlete mental health, period. God, if I haven't said it already, go ahead and subscribe. Like, I'm trying to say it more often. I'm trying, y'all. Um, you have to follow me on all platforms. I appreciate that to get all of my information, especially if there is more fights added on to the UFC Fight Night that will be coming on the other platforms, um, uh, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, and all of those things. Um, go ahead and please subscribe, like, hit the notification bell. Please share the videos. Please comment down below. Thank you. Talk to me. Take care and goodbye.